Hello everyone, welcome to Lifeless Planet. In this game you play as an astronaut exploring a distant planet. It's mostly an exploration game, but it's also got some puzzle and some platforming elements. It's made by Stage 2 Studios, and you can grab it from the official website, as well as Steam and GOG. So I'll have links to all of that in the description. Something cool you can do in the menu, by the way, is normally you just see this. But you can actually close that, and look at this. Which is this wonderful scene of these buried power poles just stretching off into the horizon. It's very pretty. I think I could stare at this for a long time and just listen to the wind and watch the dust blow by. It's a very moody game. Alright, let's start a new game. I've already played through a couple sections of it, but um, I kind of messed up my recording, so I'm starting, a, I'm starting this again. So the first 45 minutes or so of this game are not going to be blind, but the rest of it is. I'm not too far into it. So, let's begin. Ignition sequence start. Five, four, three, two, one. And here we go. We've crash-landed. Somewhere. Oh, my head is killing me. It feels like I have a concussion. Where's my crew? Strangely enough, the uh, the logs are not actually fully read out by the voice actor. It's kind of just like the bullet points that are read out, and then the rest is just left here in the in the log for you to read, which is a bit strange. But I love reading this stuff, so let's dig into it. My head is foggy. The sound of my breath puffing in my helmet is hollow and distant. It's hard to tell how long I've been unconscious, and worried that I might have a concussion. I wish I could lay back down and rest. See if the pain passes, but the situation is far too critical. To call that a hard landing would be kind. We crashed. Maybe the eggheads miscalculated the trajectory, or maybe we just hit a spell of bad luck. Whatever the case may be, this is not the paradise they described to us back home. There's no lush greenery. There's no sign of life at all. And where's my crew? I hope they're just securing a perimeter, and that I was only out for a few minutes. I need to find them, get their status, and figure out just what in the heck happened. Ah, oh, crap, and I need to do it before I run out of air. Oh yes, in my, uh, hollow tab. No need to read the whole thing, it's just a description for the PDA sort of thing that I've got here. The most important part is that, as it says here, it, uh, can scan and automatically translate text written in over 800 languages. Which is very useful. By the way, something really cool that I noticed when I was here is that the reflections in your astronaut's helmet are actually dynamic. You can see the smoke billowing up into the air through it. I wish I could get closer, but this is about as close as I can get. Can you see it? It's very cool. Definitely no static cube maps here. It's all dynamic. Oh yeah. I wish I could detach the camera and just zoom in on the helmet, because you could probably get some really cool wallpapers, you know? The curvature of the helmet, distorting the image, taking up the entire frame. Could be pretty cool. Crap. An oxygen leak. Okay, so I'm spewing oxygen, so I should probably get to some oxygen before I die. 
And what do you know, there's a glinty thing in the, in the, uh, distance. Come on, you can make it. Come on, I believe in you. There we go. Oxygen tank filled, estimated eight hours remaining. Oxygen supply vehicle model 8A. These supply vehicles will be sent to the planet three days in advance of the landing party to provide for longer excursions on the planet's surface. However, because unmanned probes have determined the planet is rich with life and oxygen levels on the planet are at near-Earth levels, these supply vehicles may not be needed. Well, so much for that. They're definitely needed. I understand that even at twice the speed of light, your journey will take 15 years. That's right. We'll be traveling so fast, our spacecraft will arrive at the planet before the transmission of this interview does. But it's still such a long trip. We'll be put into a sort of coma. Our heart rate will be slowed dramatically to minimize aging during the flight. How do you prepare for this one-way mission, knowing you will never return to Earth? Well, I have a volunteer crew of very skilled and focused individuals. We all have a deep desire to explore, to go somewhere new. And frankly, we also have a few attachments here on Earth. Yeah, that thing over there, to me, looks... It looks like a tree. Like the stump and roots of a tree, you know? So yeah, you have the ability to jump and also give yourself a little bit of a boost in the air. Just one. Just one boost. Little jet of air. A little puff. Alright, so the tracks continue on up there, but as you're about to see, we're not exactly going to make it. Because... It was a very weak stone. I love the, sp the splish splash noises of the feet in the water. It's very cool. And the sound of this cave is just wonderful. Well, maybe it's not a cave, I guess a cove, maybe? It's also a little sample here. Appears this planet is not totally devoid of beauty. First geologic sample appears to be a hydrated copper sulfate called. Okay, let me try to pronounce this. Um, calcanthite. Yeah, that's probably it. Calcanthite. This copper ore is common back on Earth. Everything about this mission is a disaster so far. The lander took a beating, and with it, most of the equipment. My suit is functional, but barely. The jetpack can still put out a single burst, which is useful for short jumps. I find I get the most distance when I trigger the burst at the top of my jumps. I was following a trackway left behind by my crew, but got separated from their trail. Hopefully I can make my way around. In the meantime, I still can't understand why this planet is barren and lifeless. Our remote observations were conclusive. 
This planet was rich with life. So, where did it go? Maybe we just dropped in the wrong spot, but initial readings aren't coming up with any trace of biological activity. There's another sample back here. Wow! A fantastic and rare find of the manganese carbonate mineral Rhodochrosite. Discovery indicates hydrothermal activity in this planet's history. That's a pretty awesome name, isn't it, by the way? Roto Crocite. Roto Crocite. I got a little bit of a puzzle here. You can push certain objects by doing this. Gotta use it to help me get up there. Come on, Stone, you gotta help me get it up, man. Help me get it up. I need to get up there somehow. There we go. Thank you, Stone. Yep, there's a waterfall. And there's water all over the place, so this is certainly a planet that could easily support life. I mean, where there's water, there's probably life. Yeah, there's another sample up here, by the way. A nice specimen of the ninth most common element in the universe. This particular mineral is quite large, and suggests a sedimentary origin associated with ancient marine deposits. I can only imagine the vast oceans that might once have covered this planet. Let's get a nice view from up here. It's a... It's a barren place, but... It's got its own strange beauty. There's a certain beauty in barrenness, I think. You know, you tend to see it in any survival-themed things. Like the Stalker series, for example. Just abandoned, crumbling places. There's a certain beauty to it. And this obviously isn't crumbling. Nothing's destroyed, but it's very barren. It's isolated. It's a bit depressing, but it's, it's kind of pretty at the same time. It's weird. I don't know. Barren places like this always just leave me with a strange feeling of... I don't know, it's like a combination of melancholy and something else. Let's go check out the waterfall. If you notice, there's actually some things in it. And some strange noises. So this would be some biological activity. Because they would appear to be creatures. There's a strange object up there, as you're about to see. I just realized, though, is there anything back here? Nah, it's a dead end.
narrowly avoided death by massive rock to the face. Thanks to a bed. A hospital bed. Just out in the middle of nowhere and then it disappeared. I don't know what that's about. I've wondered about it. Why, why is there a hospital bed and why did it disappear? Am I just simply hallucinating? I mean, I was unconscious, so... It wouldn't exactly be too surprising if I'm hallucinating, I suppose. There's probably more to it than that, though, huh? What is going on here? It's a settlement. For 15 years, I hung in cryo like a bag of forgotten, frozen vegetables. That's what they said, anyway. They played us real good with that story they spun. Another planet, suitable for housing human life. Can't believe I fell for it. I actually have to compliment them on the lack of oxygen. That's a really nice touch. Of course, they probably just tampered with the meters. I bet I could take off my helmet right now. Is that what this is? A test to see how long it takes us to break protocol? I'm not some rocket jockey kid playing at being an astronaut. What in the world is the point of all this, and where did they take my crew? I need to stay calm. My head is still spinning from the crash. Probably need a doctor. I bet they think that's funny, too. So he seems to think it's a hoax. This whole mission is a hoax. But there's quite a few possibilities. One that I actually quite like is what if we didn't... What if we actually did go to space, but... What if we didn't actually spend 15 years... In cryostasis, going to another planet? What if we actually came back to Earth? And it's just far in the future. Maybe we spent 15 years going there and then for whatever reason spent 15 years coming back? So what if this is 30 years in the future from when we left Earth, and this is just how Earth is? Somehow, for some reason, it's turned into a barren wasteland. The planet's been ruined by something. There's obviously other possibilities. Maybe I'm just hallucinating everything. Maybe it's all a dream. Although, I doubt it. That's pretty cheesy, and I think most people don't do the whole the whole thing was a dream thing anymore. It's a pretty big cliche, so I'm really hoping that's not it. What are some other possibilities? Well, I suppose this could be an actual settlement on an actual distant planet. Hmm. How do I make it up there? I think I know. It's time for some platforming. Oh no! Oh, come on. They didn't train me in astronaut school on how to do platforming. Bastards. They didn't prepare me for my real job. They said I'd be taking samples and doing science. They should have been teaching me how to jump. Yeah, wow, they really should have taught me how to jump. 
Keep in mind, I've actually played through this section before, and yet I'm still completely failing. <laughs> Needless to say, I don't have much experience with platformers. There we go. Yeah, so that's a piece of a code to a laboratory. Second half of code for access to Southern Laboratory. It's apparently part of some security protocol. That you need to keep the uh, code in multiple parts. Which is why that's only the second half. There's an oxygen tank here as well. And I am the one that will lead us to victory. Yikes. That's a long way down. No kidding, I'm not gonna go exploring down there. The only thing I'll find down there is death. Do you mean action movie one-liner? So yeah, this is a settlement. Ostensibly, on a far distant planet. Far distant planet, wow, that's a tautology if I've ever heard one. Yeah, a settlement on a distant planet. How is this possible? That's apparently been founded by the Soviet Union. a graveyard over here. These graves seem pretty makeshift. Like they were in a hurry to bury the bodies. Discovered a collection of makeshift graves outside the town. Whatever and wherever this place is, it seems things didn't end well for the inhabitants. There's a building behind me that you may have noticed. Far back there behind the grave. That is the entrance to the laboratory, but I don't have the other part of the code just yet. So we'll go there in a minute. But first, we need to be, um, attacked by some sort of a wind demon. It very much chases you. And as you might notice, there does appear to be something actually under the ground spinning. There you are. Are you okay? Oh man, this is messed up. Listen, you're almost out of oxygen. I'm pretty low myself, but I'm gonna give you everything I can. I think there may be some air canisters in that town. Okay, you're gonna be alright now. Just hang in there, buddy. 
figure this out together, all right? Whoa! Sucked into the ground. I wonder how we got hurt. From the crash or from something else? This place seems to have quite a few dangers. Namely, cyclones that chase you and things that will suck you into the ground. Oh, there's the other half of the code. Let's take it to the lab. Oh, right, low in oxygen. Okay. I gotta go top up at the canister back here. Whoops. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this note. Read that in a second when I'm not in the process of dying. What if it's faster to do this? Oh shit, you know, I didn't notice that blood trail before. Yeah, he was bleeding on his way there. Okay. Alright, what did I get here? Oh yeah, things I miss. Life has gotten very hard here. I want to go home so much. My brother said I should make a list of things I miss about home. I smile when I think about these things. Hopefully we'll be able to go back very soon. Things I miss from home. Chabarashka, which I'm assuming is Russian, I have no idea what that is. Laughter, music, medicine, fresh bread, milk, and mommy. You know, I was thinking about the significance of what he said, missing medicine. So apparently they didn't have very good medicine here at the settlement. And there's the grave over there. I'm wondering if maybe that's why they didn't have the medicine and... Perhaps there was some sort of a outbreak of sickness that happened and they just couldn't deal with it. Or maybe they were all just killed by wind demons. Let's go ahead and turn on our light here. Ah, it's so atmospheric, this game. It's really cool. Listen to that. Like, that's the sound of... hugeness, you know? Like, that's the sound something this big makes. Just this hollow, echoing rumble. It's eerie as hell. And what makes it even more eerie is the fact that I'm seeing another hospital bed. Again. And it looks like there's somebody under the covers. I've been trying to think of the significance of that. Is that maybe me? Am I in a hospital bed? Am I sick? But then again, if they're covered by the sheets, that kind of suggests they're dead, right? Isn't that what they do when people die? Yeah, this game is wonderfully atmospheric. The kind of, uh, dark, dingy, Russian-built places like, like this actually kind of remind me a bit of Stalker. No, 
no power and need to find a way to restore electricity. Alright, let's jump up in here. Let's go ahead and take the space bomb and go place it at the space place that needs to space blow up. And now we run. Very, very fast. Something I want to mention about this place, too, is it seems kind of like a laboratory. I mean, it is a laboratory, obviously, this whole uh, complex, but this specific room seems like where they did studies, because there's lots of uh, papers and a lot of microscopes. Look at all these microscopes. found some kind of portal that transported them to this planet. And then... and then things went terribly wrong. So when he first said that, that really surprised the hell out of me. I'm like, what are you talking about? Portal to what? It makes more sense when you go up here and actually read this. I found my way into some sort of research facility. Came across the skeletal remains of one former lab worker. Documents nearby indicate the Russians built some sort of portal system that led here. Though I'm still not certain where here is. This place appears to be a colony. Like, they weren't fully established before something went wrong. Yeah, so some sort of portal. So what I was actually thinking is... What does that mean for me? Like, portal. Are we talking about a portal in space? A portal on Earth? Like a Stargate or, or something like that? And something I was thinking about is, what if it's not a portal to another place, but instead a portal to another time? What if this is still Earth, but the portal simply takes you into the future when the Earth is mostly ruined? You know, desolate, a wasteland. Or maybe it is somewhere else. And if it is a portal, then how did I end up in it? Was I actually in cryostasis for 15 years, and... Where, again, where is the portal? In space? On Earth? What? It's very strange. Okay, so this is actually as far as I've played, so I'm in completely unexplored territory. From here on out. I got a hospital sign. Wish I could read what that said. Yeah, definitely a hospital. 
There's a hospital bed, hospital dividers, pri privacy, curtains. Although I suppose they're not curtains, they're more like metal sheets. Privacy, metal sheets. Yeah, so there was a virus, there was something spreading around, that's probably why there's so many graves. So I wonder if a lack of medicine was what was uh, making it so hard for them to cure it, or if it's just simply the fact that it's, as he said, uh, a, uh, what was, it, what was his exact words? Yeah, we're not dealing with terrestrial species. So maybe it's just the fact that they don't, you know, they're not familiar with what they're dealing with, and that made it so hard to combat. Because their normal medicines just weren't effective. Whoa. That's a strangely perfect room. Something does not belong. What the hell? What the hell was that? Now even more I'm wondering, is this just some... Fever dream? Death dream? Am I an astronaut that wanted to go to space, but I... Ended up not able to do it, and this is my fantasy of what would have happened? I doubt it. Wait, what's the significance of the hospital? It sounded like a woman screamed, and I see footsteps leading away from the bed. Amazing. With each test we run, her samples appear more promising. I will log more details later. There simply isn't time right now. Her samples will appear more promising. With each test, test we run. Okay, um, well I did hear a woman screaming, so perhaps that's her. Maybe that's all it is, maybe it's just a vision of what happened? But no, there's like blue skies out the window. That's obviously not... That's obviously not reality. There's no blue skies here. It sounds like they find some they found someone who could maybe cure the whatever was plaguing them. Great. I think my mind is playing tricks on me. My mind is playing tricks on me. I thought for a moment I was back on Earth. After the hallucination passed, I found a human trackway leading out of the underground facility. The footprints glow green for reasons I can't explain. I took some samples, but haven't had time to analyze. The footprints seem to lead out of the facility, so... For now, I'm going to follow them. But with caution. You can do it. Ah, I could probably roll that into it to stop it. Yes, 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 yes. Bingo. I 
I just love how eerie and echoey everything is in here. Even the burst of my air for my suit. Listen to it. I mean, this place... Oh my god, look at that. Yeah, this place just dwarfs me. I'm, I'm tiny, I'm nothing, I'm insignificant. Compared to the scale of this place. I like it when games give you a sense of cosmic insignificance. You know, that lovely feeling you sometimes get when you stare at the night sky and look up at the stars and think, wow, holy crap. I need to find a way to turn this on. What? Wait, turn this, what even is this? Oh, it's a little cart thing, okay. <laughs> well, that was easy. Puzzle solved! Alright, that way is blocked. Let's go this way. Damn it, I keep pressing that button accidentally. where she came from, obviously. What's up here? Looks like they were trying to mine this stuff. I hope it isn't radioactive. I've located an abandoned mining operation. The rocks here appear to, sh appear to share the same phosphorescent properties of the human footprints I'm following. I suspect there's some radiation involved here. I'm not sure if this area is safe, so I'm moving on, following the green footprints as best I can. Yeah, let's get out of here. Okay, where do I go? They just like end right here. Where where did she go? I don't think I'm supposed to go up there. In fact, I don't think I'm supposed to be up here at all. I actually might get myself killed if I fall down. You can die from fall damage, by the way. Alright, there's nothing in the pipe, so I'm not going to be shooting myself out like some sort of ridiculous cannonball person. Um, 
I think maybe I go this way. Maybe not. Let me see if I can get up there. There was no pathway in here, was there? Oh, yeah, there is. Here we go. This should do it. I'm not sure where I'm jumping to after this pipe, though. Oh, there we go. By the way, let me try turning on an option that I think I turned off. Uh, yeah, auto center camera. I actually turned that off. Let me try turning it back on. Yeah, it makes the camera, well, auto center. Nope, wrong key. You're probably wondering why I keep opening this, by the way. It's actually on the uh, B button. I'm, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller. And most of my experience with a, an Xbox 360 controller is with Dark Souls 2. And in Dark Souls 2, the B button is the dodge button. It's the, the roll button, which I used constantly to go anywhere. So I, I keep having the urge to press B to roll because of Dark Souls 2. Which is wildly inappropriate because astronauts don't roll. It's not right. It's just... No, you don't do that. You know what? I actually hate the auto center camera. Absolutely loathe it. Hold on. Is there anywhere uh, special I can go to? Look at that. It looks like it's steaming. Almost like it's uh, like a hot spring or something. I wonder what the temperature is right now, actually. I'm assuming my suit is temperature regulated. So it might not matter in particular, as long as it's not too- Oh god! It's okay, it's okay. We can recover, we can rebuild. Yeah, as long as it's not too extreme, I'm sure the suit can probably compensate. Oh, come on. Oh, for the love of God. Oh, wow, I never looked up there. Holy... Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that a person? Look up there. Right in the center of the building. That, yeah, that's a person. Is that her? Uh, there's no... Oh, there's no zoom in key, is there? Yeah, that's a person. It's like the G-Man. Always watching. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. Well, okay. They probably don't want to kill me. So I guess they're not that much like the G-Man. Actually, did the G-Man want to kill you? I actually don't remember. He was always a menacing figure. But I don't remember if he actually directly tried to harm you. I wonder if, like the G-Man, she's going to run away when I get up here. She's still there. Well, I'm assuming it's a she. Because I'm assuming it's the person I'm chasing. I don't actually know, though. Yes, it is. So we meet. I 
I have no idea what you just said. I'm gonna assume she just very angrily said, You are a handsome spaceman, I love you. And then ran away for some reason. Yeah, again, I don't know what she actually said, but she did say it very angrily. I'm guessing she's not happy with me for some reason. Несмотря на нерешительность наших ученых, я увеличил выход энергии генераторов тока на 200% без всякого заметного влияния на окружающую среду. Скорость размножения видов, называемых нами зеленый огонь, кажется достаточно высокой, и мы думаем, что они также могут служить источником пищи для остальной растительной жизни на планете. Чтобы успокоить моих коллег, я вернул генераторы на нормальный выход тока. Но результат... Я вдруг подумал. Интересно, не является ли обилие энергии само по себе сдерживающим фактором военного конфликта? Опустили бы наши враги свое оружие, если бы узнали, что наши реакторы никогда не отключатся? Что осталось бы от их самодовольства, от того, что их флаг находится на Луне, если бы, глядя на Землю, они видели только неугасимый свет могущественного Советского Союза? В сравнении с научным потенциалом, который представлен здесь, ядерное оружие кажется лишь дубинкой дикаря. Все больше наших семей перебирается сюда. Наше общество расцвело настолько, что мы уже можем назвать это место Родиной. Новой Родиной. Наверное, таким же чувством были охвачены великие писатели нашего времени, глядя на свои бессмертные творения. Истинное совершенство. I wonder if there's something up here. I'm always wondering if there's something up here. Or over there. Or over here. Uh, I don't think I can get up there. Nah. There's nothing up there anyway. It's very uncomfortable as she's always just looking at me from afar. Almost like I'm her prey, but she's not actually chasing me, she's running away, so not really. Strange. And her shirt says uh, CCCP, like she's been a test subject of the Soviet Union or something. Prisoner, maybe? At least given clothes by them, probably, dressed by them. That's what I'm thinking, anyway. Whoa. Is there a signal? I 
I heard something. For a second, I heard something. Voices. What is that? New type of mineral? Massive chunks of it. Garnets. Initial analysis indicates almondine or pyrope garnets in a mica cyst. Cyst? Cyst? I think it's cyst. Scheist? I'm not sure. <laughs> Typical of minerals formed deep underground at very high pressure. If confirmed, this suggests active plate tectonic activity in this planet's crust, which could contribute to an environment more hospitable for life. They're beautiful. Is she walking on the freaking wire? What the hell? That seems awfully dangerous. Wow. Is she superhuman? Or... Gotta be careful here, I could very easily slip off to my doom. Is that? That's a building I've never been to, isn't it? Hold on, wait a minute. Oh wait, I think I have to go there anyway, don't I? And, yeah, I can't make that, so yeah, let's go back there. I don't suppose that's a boost, is it? Jetpack fuel collected, extended boost mode enabled. Ooh! Alright, time for some serious jetpacking. <laughs> My jetpack sure wasn't made for low gravity jumping, but it does help me across large gaps. I found the trick is to space out the jet bursts for maximum distance. If I repeat the bursts too quickly, it just uses up the charge before it has time to recover. And I don't get very high. Now I have to decide if I want to go back down below for the easy jump, or take the exciting and dangerous route from here. I think I'll take the exciting route from here. But uh, let me try this out first. Okay, how many boosts? I think that's seven. One, two, three, four, five. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it looks like a seven. Okay. Let's do this. Alright, 
What could go wrong? Here we go. Easy enough. Actually, might have to save some of it just to uh, protect myself from breaking my legs. Am I going to be going all the way down there? Oh my god. Ooh, more garnets. Almondine garnets. Further samples of the garnets confirm that they are of the almondine variety. Common on Earth, but these are atypically large. Rock matrix is metamorphic, likely caused by mountain building, again suggesting an active geologic past for this planet. Oh god, am I going to be going from here? Oh god. Um... <laughs> I mean, it said this was the more dangerous path, which suggests that this can be a normal path. I mean, uh, like, it can be a path that actually takes me where I want to go and not just to a bonus area, like, where these garnets are. So... I can't make it that far, though, can I, with seven bursts? Do you think I can? I don't know. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... <laughs> Yeah. It became increasingly obvious that I was not going to make that. <laughs> Alright, I don't have to collect these things again, right? I don't think so. Alright, I should be able to make this. Yeah, I really gotta watch that speed. Could get over to that rock, but I don't see a point. I wonder if I can make my way down there. I probably can't, it's probably insta-death. Even though I'm pretty sure my boosts would allow me to survive, I don't think the game would allow me to go down there, because there's probably no way back up. Alright, where is she? She's not still climbing up there, is she? I don't see her. Yeah, you really got to be careful about your momentum too, because you don't—you have almost no air control. So if you're, like, if I jump up in the air and try to move somewhere, it barely moves me. So if you like accidentally hit into the wall and then start boosting, like if you bounce back, you're you're gonna end up going backwards, like this. So you got to make sure you have forward momentum before you jump. Very important. Climb that. No, I just go through the holes. Okay. For some reason, I was thinking it might have a very accepting collision mesh. <laughs> One that allows me to climb it like a pillar. Double rainbow! Look at that. It's beautiful.
There's no radio signal under here. Nope. Whoa, what is that up there? Huge, like, red glowing stone. Almost looks like it's the Garnets again. They seem they seem to be actually glowing, and they're even bigger. Oh god, I'm gonna have to make the walk, aren't I? Oh boy, yes I am. Okay, don't look down. Don't look down. <laughs> no kidding. Oh my god. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to save this walk for the next episode. So, I'm really enjoying this game so far. Yeah, it's very cool. Incredibly atmospheric. I really like it. Alright, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.